Should you be worried about the position of the scapula with subacromial shoulder pain? A common idea is that there's abnormal biomechanics of the shoulder blade, and that's leading to pain with overhead movements. In this video, we'll go over some of the studies that have looked at the influence of scapular stabilization exercises, and then we'll also go over some exercises for subacromial shoulder pain. Let's start off with this study here, which looked at a shoulder strengthening rehab program compared to that same shoulder strengthening rehab program plus scapular stabilization exercises, both of these programs were eight weeks, performed three times per week. The shoulder strengthening program consisted of six exercises, a sideline external rotation, a prone horizontal abduction with external rotation, a scapular punch, push-ups performed on knees, full can exercise, and then a diagonal D1 pattern. In addition to those shoulder strengthening exercises, the scapular stabilization exercises included a towel slide, scapular clocks, PNF patterns, modified inferior glide, scapular orientation exercise, and protraction and retraction in front of a mirror. And what the study found was that both groups improved, but there was actually no difference between the groups. And what this means is that the scapular stabilization exercises didn't actually contribute to any more improvement compared to just the shoulder strengthening exercises. Additionally, another study by the same group looked at the causal mechanisms of why these exercises were helpful. And what they found is that neither scapular position or scapular movement were the reasons why these exercises were helpful. But they did find that there was an association between increasing the strength of those scapular muscles and improvements in shoulder function at eight weeks. But again, it's important to remember that association is not the same as causation. These exercises can help strengthen those scapular muscles, but that doesn't mean that those are the reasons why that these exercises were helpful. So what does this mean for the treatment of subacromial shoulder pain? Well, we probably don't need to worry about changing either the movement or the position of the scapula with subacromial shoulder pain, as both of these studies suggest that it's probably not that important for recovery. When looking at rehab, the shoulder strengthening program used in this study is very similar to what we see used in other studies. For example, this study here used three exercises a supported external rotation, shoulder abduction, and then an unsupported shoulder external rotation. And what they found is that these led to similar improvements as what we saw with the shoulder strengthening exercise program used in the previous study. Although the shoulder strengthening program included some overhead strengthening exercise, which may explain why they saw slightly better results when it came to function. So incorporating the exercises used in this study and then gradually increasing the load with overhead movements appears to be an effective strategy for subacromial shoulder pain. So hopefully this video on the scapula and subacromial shoulder pain was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. I'll leave another video here on some exercises for subacromial shoulder pain as well. I'll see you in the next video.